So this is just a sample I got. I think this is from like an old gold and silver mine. Uh, it's pretty rotty rock, so it should be pretty easy easy to bash up. Uh, it's mostly, I think, pyrite and maybe arsenic pyrite. It's quite oxidized. I think it's probably been sitting on the surface for 100 years. Um, this is too big to put in the crusher. I don't want to put anything in there that's more than an inch uh, in length on any side. So I'm going to uh, bash it up with this guy into smaller pieces. And then uh, we'll chuck some of them in the crusher and see what happens. Okay, so I've got them all smacked down to a little more of a manageable size for the crusher, kind of minus one inch or so. And uh, I've also got some fresh faces on here so you can get a closer look at, at the mineral here. It's very white, not quite white, but um, yeah, kind of a pale, pretty pale color. Maybe it's a little better in the shade here, if I can focus on it. There you go. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like. Pretty much all the same. This is a little bit dirtier oxidized piece, I guess. Maybe a little bit of quartz gang. There might be a tiny bit of sphalerite on some of the pieces too, but most of them are pretty much pure sulfide like these guys. So I don't think I'm gonna have to do much separation once I get them all ground up. Might just be able to roast them and, uh, and then smelt them. At least that's the plan. So, anyway, that's what I got. It's not, a, it's not a big sample. I have a small amount of it already crushed up over there. Uh, although some of it's still kind of coarse because I only put it in for a few seconds. So I'll uh, sieve it out with my sieve, put the oversized stuff back in, and uh, see what she looks like afterwards. So, crushed it all up. I'm gonna quickly run it all through the sieve and anything that doesn't pass through the sieve, I'm gonna toss back in the crusher and uh, powder that up. Uh, okay, so now that I've got all my material crushed down, today I figured I'd break out the uh, kiln and uh, try roasting some of these sulfides. Uh, I just have a thin layer spread out there over the pan and I just started to see a bit of smoke coming off of it, so let that roast for a while until it all changes color and then I'll keep putting on other batches because I've got a whole bag of that to, to roast still. So you can see here how it changes color. Uh, over here on the left is the ground up sulfide minerals, mostly pyrite, prior to roasting and over here is what it looks like after I've roasted it, sort of uh, blackish red uh, color. So. And it changes color pretty quick. Okay, so today I'm going to try doing my first smelt of this roasted ore. So I'm going to be mixing about 30 grams of this roasted ore. You can see it's gone all sort of reddish and black from that uh, brown that it was originally. Then I'll put in probably 120 grams of borax. I don't have anhydrous borax, but I'm just going to use regular borax. Uh, hopefully it doesn't boil and splatter too much. 
I'll put in uh, 30 grams of soda ash and 30 grams of silica. I'll mix it all up in the bowl here and then toss it in my crucible. This is a new uh, clay graphite crucible that I got. Um, then I'll toss it in my kiln for maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. We'll see how long it takes to boil. And then uh, I'll pour it off into sort of mold I made here and hopefully, uh, hopefully the heavy lead can sink to the bottom. Uh, before I put it in, I'll probably add 25 grams of lead as well as a collector metal. So hopefully that will collect any precious metals or other base metals that are in the roasted ore. All right, I'll get that mixed up and then I will light up the kiln. Uh, okay, so I've got my uh, crucible charge mixed up here. I also added 25 grams of lead pellets. I'm gonna put that in the kiln. I'm gonna light it up and let it melt. So uh, I finally got the charge up temperature here. Uh, it's probably just under a thousand degrees Celsius in my crucible. You can see, like, see kind of bubbling and boiling away. Uh, I'm gonna let it go for maybe another 10 more minutes or so to make sure it's fully melted and mixed up. And uh, then we'll pour it out and see what we got. Okay, so I finally managed to get everything out of my mold. Um, my stainless steel, mold, stainless steel mold, you can see everything really stuck to the bottom. So it was actually really difficult to get it out. I pretty much had to shatter everything to get it out. And then here's my little lead button that was in the bottom. It's still got a whole bunch of slag stuck to it. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, it's got an interesting texture. I'm gonna bang it with a hammer to see if it's soft at all but uh, I'll weigh it up as well. And then you can see my, my slag here, very glassy, very black, um, so that's good. And uh, I didn't find any mat, pretty much just all this black glassy slag and this kind of ugly looking lead button. I think uh, I did preheat my mold a little bit, but perhaps I didn't heat it enough. And uh, I think it would benefit from being tapered even more at the bottom. You can see my button here is kind of wide and shallow. It would be nice if it was a little more packed together. So I might have to uh, heat this up again and try to reform it a little bit. Make it a little deeper in the bottom. And uh, there were a few little pieces that looked a little metallic. But for the most part, uh, it's pretty much just the black classy slag and this guy so I'll, I'll hammer this uh, I'll hammer the rest of the slag off of this and then I'll weigh it up and see if we recovered all of our lead that we put in so I've got it all cleaned up and you can see it's got a really weird texture on the bottom of it it's probably from uh, getting stuck to the stainless steel and uh, I just weighed it up now that I've got all the slag cleaned off and it's only about 20 grams so I definitely lost a couple grams of lead all the oxygen inside there and there's not so much left to actually uh, react with the molten lead to create lead oxide but uh, now that I've turned it down a little bit and it's cracked open uh, I can certainly see it uh, oxidizing on the surface quite a bit more so hopefully it shouldn't take too much longer. Getting smaller slowly but surely. So I let my uh, oven cool down here for a while 
and it looks to me like in the very very bottom there there's a very gold colored bead at the very bottom of my cupel so uh, I'm going to take that out and get a closer look and see if I can't put it on the scale.